Hello, my name is Christina Niehoff, and I am the geriatric pharmacist on the acute care for the elderly unit at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I have a passion for decreasing polypharmacy by deprescribing potentially inappropriate medications in older adults. Today, we will focus on one class of medications, proton pump inhibitors, as an example of a potentially inappropriate medication that can be a target for deprescribing. Older adults often have multiple chronic conditions for which they are prescribed multiple medications. However, not all medications that are prescribed are optimal. The Beers criteria is, most, is the most well-known list of potentially inappropriate medications, which was recently updated in 2015. In this most recent update, proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, were added to this list when used for eight weeks or longer. Today, we will discuss the mechanism of action of PPIs, long-term adverse effects, and approaches to deprescribing. This is a model illustrating the mechanism of action of a specific PPI, omeprazole. PPIs are lipophilic weak bases, which are permeable to the parietal cell membrane from the bloodstream. They diffuse through the cytoplasm, become protonated in the acidic environment of the secretory canaliculus. Since omeprazole is an irreversible inhibitor of the potassium hydrogen ATPase pump, it, which is an ir, it forms an irreversible covalent bond with this enzyme. This inhibits hydrogen secretion from the parietal cell. This process cannot be reversed until new pumps are made, and the half-life of the hydrogen potassium pump is about 48 hours. Prescribing of anti-secretory medications has substantially increased over the past decade. Indications for prescribing PPIs include mild to moderate esophagitis, gastroesophageal reflux disease, peptic ulcer disease, upper GI symptoms, stress ulcer prophylaxis, H. pylori, Barrett's esophagus, esophagus excuse me, Barrett's esophagus, chronic NSAID users with bleeding risk, severe esophagitis, and documented history of a bleeding GI ulcer. PPIs were historically thought to have few long-term side effects. However, emerging data suggest several long-term consequences of adverse effects from chronic PPI use, which include nutrient deficiencies and infections. We will discuss these in more detail. Some nutrients require gastric acidity to be absorbed, which include magnesium, calcium, vitamin B12, and iron. When the gastric pH is increased, meaning the stomach becomes more basic, these nutrients are not optimally absorbed. As a result, we see significant hypomagnesemia, which often will not resolve with magnesium repletion and requires discontinuation of the PPI. Hypocalcemia has resulted in an increased fracture risk in both men and women, with a 25% increased risk in overall fractures and 47% increase in spinal fractures in postmenopausal women. Calcium absorption can be overcome by using the calcium citrate salt formulation because the citrate salt is less affected by low gastric acidity. Other nutrients like vitamin B12 and iron can result in anemia over long periods of continuous use. Infections are the second long-term side effect that has been observed. PPIs increase pH, which may allow for more bacterial growth, resulting in changes of the respiratory and gastrointestinal microbiome. This is evidenced by the increased incidence of pneumonia and Clostridium difficile, noted with chronic PPI use. These long-term side effects can be decreased by limiting PPI use to those who really need it. Data suggests that up to two-thirds of PPI users may be inappropriate and could be a target for discontinuation. Looking back to our indication slide, the chronic conditions listed in the red box are reasons to continue taking a PPI. So Barrett's esophagus, <laughs> Barrett's esophagus chronic NSAID users with bleeding risk, severe esophagitis, and documented history of a bleeding ulcer. In these cases, you can consider consulting a gastroenterologist to discuss deprescribing. 
all other indications for PPIs are fair game to attempt a discontinuation. Once you decide you want to deprescribe the PPI, how do you attempt it? Well, there are several medications that you can stop abruptly without fear of harm. PPIs are not on that list. If a PPI is abruptly stopped, a phenomenon known as rebound hypersecretion is observed in 60 to 90% of individuals who take PPIs for at least two to three months. This is because PPIs induce parietal cell pro proliferation, which leads to a state of hyperacidity after discontinuation. This rebound hyperacidity can create an uncomfortable situation for the patient and a subsequent dependence on continued PPI use. Rebound hypersecretion can occur in as little as eight weeks. Therefore, we must consider an alternative way of discontinuing the PPIs, a taper. Abrupt discontinuation has been shown to be effective at one year in 14 to 64% of patients, whereas a dose reduction has an endpoint shown that 30, 30 to 50% of patients can tolerate a lower dose. We recommend to decrease the PPI dose before decreasing the interval. For example, if a patient is on omeprazole 40 milligrams twice a day, you would decrease to 20 milligrams twice a day before then decreasing to 20 milligrams once a day. Each step of the taper should take about two to four weeks. Once at the lowest possible once daily dose, you can consider every other day dosing. If breakthrough hypersecretion occurs, you can recommend Tums, or um, for our older adults, you, can, you wanna recommend Tums for older adults. However, in younger adults, you can consider using H2 antagonists. We typically avoid H2 blockers in older adults if possible due to the negative effect on cognition. This slide is showing you an example of a deprescribing algorithm specifically for PPIs. This PDF can be found on deprescribing.org along with several other deprescribing resources. Lastly, I want to highlight the non-pharmacological treatments associated with with decreasing GERD symptoms, such as avoiding tobacco, alcohol, and acidic foods and beverages, eating smaller, more frequent meals, elevating the head of the bed, and weight loss. Thank you for listening to the presentation, and best of luck with deprescribing PPIs.